Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about Play Squid Goodness of Feet Test. This video shows you how to test whether a set of data follows binomial distribution. The following video, I'm going to talk about how to test Poisson distribution, normal distribution, and some other distribution. If you find that this video is useful, Please share to your friends, to your students, or to anybody who need this. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe my channel by hitting the subscribe button below so that you won't miss the videos later. So, let's start the lesson right now. In this video, I'm going to talk about chi-squared goodness of fit test. So chi-squared goodness of fit test is used to test whether a set of data follows a specific distribution. For example, binomial distribution, Poisson distribution, normal distribution or some other distribution. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use goodness of fit test to test whether a set of data follows a binomial distribution. For Poisson distribution and normal distribution, that will be in the next video. So for goodness of fit test, generally there are four steps. The first step, state the hypothesis so the second step is calculate the test statistic that is chi squared equals the sum of O minus E power 2 divided by E where O is the observed frequency that is the real data collected from the sample. Normally O is given in the question. For E, E is expected frequency. Now, E can be calculated by using the formula N times P, where N is the sample size and P is the probability of each class. Now, formula to be used to calculate the probability is uh, depends on the distribution that we are going to test. If we want to test binomial distribution, then the formula to calculate the probability is binomial distribution probability. If you want to test Poisson, then Poisson probability and so on. So generally, first we need to calculate the probability of each of the class, then followed by the expected frequency, then we combine the observed frequency and expected frequency by using the formula in order to calculate the test statistic chi-squared. Then step number three, determine the critical value and rejection region. Then step four, make the decision and conclusion. Now let's go to the question. It has been found that 60% of the computer chips produced in a factory are faulty. As part of quality control, 100 samples of four chips are selected at random and each chip is tested. The number of 40 chips in each sample is recorded with the results given in the following table. Carry out a goodness of fit test at the 5% significance level to investigate whether the number of 40 chips fits the binomial distribution with the parameters n equals 4 and p equals 0 0.6. So now first state the hypothesis. For now hypothesis, that is the statement, the data fits the binomial distribution. For alternative hypothesis, that is the negative 
statement compared with the null hypothesis, that is, the data does not fit the binomial distribution. Then for second step, calculate the test statistic. From the data given, this is the possible outcome from 0 to 4. Because each sample has got 4 chips. So maybe when we go to the sample, maybe none of the chips is 40. Maybe one chip is 40, maybe 2, maybe 3 or maybe 4. So that is the possible outcome. Then the number of the sample is the observed frequency. So now if we want to calculate the chi-squared value, we need to use this formula. Then in order to calculate E, we need to use E equals NP. So means first we need to calculate the probability for each of the class. Since we are going to test the binomial distribution, so the formula used to calculate the probability is the probability of binomial distribution. So for the first class when x is equal to 0, we substitute x is equal to 0, then n is 4, x is 0, p is 0 0.6, then when we press the calculator, it is 0 0.0256. Using this probability, now we can find the expected frequency that is n times p, n is 100 times p, it is 2.65. Now for the second class that is x is equal to 1, when we substitute into the formula, we get 0 0.1536. And based on this probability, we can calculate the E that is 15.36. Then when X is 2, the probability is 0 0.3456 and the E is 34.56. When X is 3, probability is 0 0.3456, E is 34.56. And when x is 4, the probability is 0 0.1296, then e is 12.96. Here, students are advised to show the working step, where the student need to show the substitution of x is 0, n is 4. Please do not straight away press calculator and straight away give the number of the probability here. Same as the E, please show the working step by showing the N is 100 times the probability to get the value of E. Please do not straight away press calculator to get the value of E. In this case, you might lose some of the marks if you don't show the working step. At least you have to show two working steps here. After calculate the values of E, now we can proceed to calculate the chi-squared. To do this, I think it is easier if we can combine or rewrite all the values in a table. But to do this, one thing we must be very careful that is the value of E. Since the value of E, that is expected frequency, must be at least 5, if there is any value of E which is less than 5, then the class must be combined with the next class. For example, just now when X is equal to 0, E is equal to 2.56. So in this case, the class X equals 0 must be combined with the class X equals 1, become one single class. That is, X is equal to 0 or 1. The value of O must be combined also, and the E after combined, it is 17.92. So by using this value, we substitute into the formula, O is 14, E is 17.92. Then when we calculate, we get 0 0.8575. Then when X is 2, O is 27, E is 34.56, 
when substitute into the formula, we get 1.6538. When x is 3, o is 49, e is 34.56. When substitute into the formula, we get 6.0334. When x is 4, o is 10 and e is 12.96. When we substitute into the formula, we get 0 0.6760. So same thing, students are advised to show the working step here where students need to show the substitution of O and E at least two times in order to avoid losing any mark. Then finally, we total up all the value here to get the value of chi-square. It is equal to 9.22. Then when we come to step 3, determine the critical value and the rejection region. So we are given that the significant level it is 5%. So means alpha is 0 0.05. Then in order to find the critical value and rejection region, we need a value we call it as degree of freedom. That is V. V is equal to K minus M minus 1. So K is the number of classes. The number of classes that is after combined. In case there is any value of E which is less than 5 where we need to do, where we need to combine. So after the combine, the number of classes that is K. Then M is the number of estimate population parameter. For binomial, the population parameter in the calculation is P. If P is not given, then we need to estimate. So to estimate the P, we can use mean divided by N. Because under binomial, mean is equal to N times P. If we want to find P, so mean divided by n. Mean we can calculate from the data given. But in this question, since the p is given, which is 0 0.6, so here we don't have any estimate population parameter. So m is equal to 0. So therefore, degree of freedom is equal to 4 minus 0 minus 1 equals 3. Now we go to Critical value. Critical value can be found from the chi square table by using degree of freedom 3, by using the alpha significant level 1 minus alpha, it is 0 0.95. Then we get 7.815. As for the rejection region, since the critical value is equal to 7.815, if the value of chi squared that we calculate is greater than 7.815, which is inside the rejection region, then we will reject the H node. So therefore, the rejection region is H node is rejected if chi squared is greater than 7.815. Now we go to step 4. Make decision and conclusion. Since the chi-square that we calculate is equal to 9.2207, which is greater than 7.815, so therefore H node is rejected. So now to make the conclusion, we can use this statement. At 5% of significance level, it is sufficient evidence to conclude that the data does not fit the binomial distribution. When writing the conclusion, first thing we must mention the significant level which is 5%. Then as for the keyword, if the decision is reject the H node, then the keyword is sufficient evidence. If the decision is not reject H node, then the keyword is insufficient evidence. Then to conclude the H1 does not fit the binomial decision is H1. Then this conclusion is based on the test. 
Now we go to answer the question. Since the question asks whether the number of 40 chips follow the binomial distribution, so we answer the question, therefore, the number of 40 chips does not fit the binomial distribution with parameters n equals 4 and p equals 0 0.6. So, that's all for now. Do you understand what you learned today? If you have any question, let me know in Teacher Eileen Matt's group. If you find that this video is useful, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you keep on learning and keep on watching my videos. And I hope to see you soon. Bye!